In today's video, before we start inserting points, we're going to take a look at point file formats and the different formats we can bring them into Civil 3D and how we can make a new point file format. So I have a blank drawing here. This was the one we used in the previous example, so my point groups are still here. And it should filter the points when we could bring them in. However, we're, we don't want to do that yet. We're going to look under the settings tab. So if we go to the settings tab under point, under point file formats, I have weeded out the default Autodesk ones a little bit. So you might see here some more in yours or some less in yours, etc. I've also added a few. Now these are the ones that I've used. And when we start talking about these letters, P and E would be point number northing easting. If we look at a Z and a D, we can add in elevation and description to these. So it all depends on the format that you get your point file in from the surveyor. A lot of the work I do is based on LiDAR data actually. So we get an X, Y, Z or a northern easting elevation and that's the file format we get. There's no point number, there's no description. The downside to that is it covers a large chunk of land and you can't use any description keys. You can't set up any of uh, these point groups to filter your points out, etc. You just get a large blanket of points over an area. However, the file that we're going to be looking at today is the one, the loam pile that we did in previous exercises. So I'm going to open up the point file, which is on the screen here. It's just a notepad file. And taking a look at the file here, we can start to decipher what the formats are or what the format that this file came in. Now, knowing your coordinate system is very important here. And it depends where you're working. In Alberta, we have, we can have three, seven, probably between seven and 10 different coordinate systems that the points can come in and ones that I've experienced before. So knowing, knowing those uh, coordinate systems, knowing the format, et cetera, is going to help you out immensely. So I've opened up the file here and the first number, it is in sequential order, 2,000, 28,000, etc. So that one I can already decipher to be the point number. That's not going to be your northing. That's not going to be your easting. There's no uh, dot 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 or decimal decimal whatever uh, etc. for that number. So that is not going to be anything other than a point number. The second one again knowing where you're working and which coordinate system it is. Usually if it's a northing and we're working in Canada, it's going to be seven digits. So this is seven digits before the decimal. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that would be my northing. It'll be six, or six digits before the decimal if it's an easting. And that's only in the UTM zone. We have 3TM and 10TM, which will be one, two, or three, four, five digits as your easting. We have elevation here, and then we have description. So looking at this file, we have point number, northing, oops, sorry, point number, northing, easting, elevation, description. So open up the point file first. For sure, open up the point file and take a look. I'm not gonna save it. And we can take a look in our list of point file formats here. Now I do have one for point number, northing, easting, elevation, description. I have one for space delimited. And I believe I do have one for common delimited down here. So another thing we didn't look at in the file is what separates the numbers. So the point number in the northing, uh, we did see it was a comma. Sometimes it could be a space. So that all depends. I do have one here. However, we're going to make a new one. And I'm going to choose user point file. And it's going to bring up this window. So I'm going to name this point number northing easting elevation description. I'm going to name it comma delimited. I'm just going to put Kyle at the end of it just so I know it's the one I made. And we can set up a default file extension. So if you get all these files in CSV, set up a default CSV. So when you run the command, it's just a little bit quicker. This is a text file. I'm going to leave it as a text file. Uh, format options, if it's collimated or delimited by. So this one is delimited by a comma. If it's a space, just put a space in there. And then we look down here. So we have a number of columns that we could read into our point file. Let's click on the first one. 
column name. So if we remember, the column name was point number. The second column, northing. The third column, easting. The fourth column would be elevation. And the last column would be description. And raw description, full description, I tend to go with raw description for these. Is It reads it into both columns anyway. So that is just quickly setting up a point file format and we'll hit OK. And as soon as we hit OK, we notice that it's in the list here. So P, N, E, Z, D, comma, delimited, Kyle. These do not come in alphabetical order. Although I wish they did. It'd be easier to find them. Now that's just setting up a simple insert in a coordinate system, UTM, 3TM, 10TM, etc. Another powerful option with these point file formats is that we can convert coordinate systems. So if you get point file formats in a 3TM, 3 degree wide coordinate system, and you actually need them in a UTM coordinate system, we can set it to do that. So I have one already here built. It's a point number northing easting elevation description. It converts from 3TM to whatever coordinate system your drawing is in. So you need to have the coordinate system set up in your drawing. And if you remember drawing utilities, drawing settings, units and zone, and say we wanted UTM 83 zone 12. dash 12. So that coordinate system needs to be set up in your drawing before we can run this command. However, I'm going to take a look at the properties of this and just go through the properties and then I'll look at the lat long one as well because lat long applies to the entire world. So I've named it PNEZD 3TM1142 star. So it'll convert to whatever coordinate system your drawing is in. Default file extension is CSV. I don't have a comment. It's delimited by a, co a comma. Now this button here, coordinate zone transformation, this is the coordinate system of the file you are importing. So your CSV file, your text file, etc., needs to be in a 3TM114 coordinate zone. And again, if we click on the little world button here, we see that this is the same list from drawing utilities, drawing settings. So the file I received from the surveyor is in 3TM114. My drawing file is in UTM. 83 zone 12. I've set up down below point number. Then I have grid northing, grid easting, point elevation, and raw description. So I've set those five columns up. I'm going to hit OK. And then we'll take a look at the lat long one. Again, same thing point number, northing, easting, elevation, description. This converts lat long Canada spatial reference system to whatever's coordinate system my drawing's in. So the first column, I have point number, decimal degrees latitude, decimal degrees longitude, point elevation, raw description, delimited by a comma, default file extension CSV, and here's the coordinate zone transformation of the file. It's LLCSRS. Now to quickly demonstrate this, I'm going to take a file that is in 10TM Forest and I'm going to convert it to, we'll say 3TM because then we'll definitely notice uh, a shift in the coordinates. So I'm going to go to Drawing Utilities, Drawing Settings. I'm going to change my coordinate system here to Cana 83-3TM114 and hit OK. So my drawing is now in 3TM. And the file I'm going to import is the 10 TM forest. So I'm going to go up to points, create points. I'm going to click on the imports points button. I'm going to choose my, actually I'm going to go insert the file first because this will reset. I'm going to choose my survey file. And I know this file's in 3 TM or 10 TM forest because of the company I downloaded it from. So I'm going to choose my PNEZD bracket common to delimited 10TM to start. So it's going to take my 10TM file and convert it to 3TM. 
And if we look at here, the northings are approximately 5.65 million and the easting is 568,000. Yes, I know there's no description. It doesn't matter because it's not going to read a description and it's just going to leave it blank. So we can leave that there. I'm going to add these point groups. I'm going to create a new point group. I'm just going to call it test. And then two very important buttons here. These advanced options do elevation adjustment if possible. Now, when we're converting from one coordinate system to another, if it's a 1927, for sure, we need to adjust the elevation a little bit. We also have to coordinate transform. So if I'm taking something from a, a 1927 coordinate system, converting it to a 1984 coordinate system, depending on where you are in North America, it's going to translate anywhere between 10 to two to 300 meters. So these two options need to be selected. I want to adjust my elevations. I want to adjust my coordinates. I'm going to make sure all this is set up properly. I'm going to hit OK. And we're going to give that a few minutes to load here. All right, it looks like that's completed. So I'm going to close that. I'm going to go to Prospector. My points are definitely in the drawing. I'm going to run the Zoom Extents. And if this has worked out, We look down here and I don't think it actually has. There's still the 5 million. Now, there is a problem with the co uh, Canadian coordinate systems. And they are not included by default in Civil 3D. So I'm going to run the command NAD or map CS library. I'm going to type in NAD 83 underscore TO underscore CSRS. And it should load up the only one. I'm going to edit it, look under grid file, grid data file interpolation. Okay, that is there. So that was not the problem. I do have it set up. And this NTV file, you can just get from Googling uh, the Canadian government website and you can download it from them. And if you give me a second, I'm going to diagnose why this did not transform. All right, I've diagnosed the issue as user error here. So we'll go and insert it with the proper coordinate system. Now, this is where the points were showing up before, so about 475,000 easting. I'm going to re-add my survey file. And I, I was selecting the 10TM to start, but this file's in 10TM forest, which is a positive easting additional of about 500,000. Keeps numbers positive. So I'm going to select the 10TM forest. I'm going to add the points to my test. And there's my northing, there's my easting, there's my elevation, there's my description. And if we remember, it was appearing about 470,000. I'll click OK and wait a few seconds here. Now, it, it's always important to pay attention when you're doing any CAD work because you can inadvertently make a little mistake like that. 10TM, 10TM forest, they're very different coordinate systems. However, one's just off by a factor of about 500,000. So it shifts all the points east 500,000 meters. So we'll give this a second to load. And I'll zoom extents now, and it should take me to around negative numbers. So this is just west of Calgary, Alberta. So we this is the 3TM coordinate system. So one the city relies on, so we're negative numbers. And if my air photo works, which it hasn't lately, we'll see that it was in the right location, but air photo is not working. It hasn't for the last little while. So that is point file formats and even setting up one to transfer your coordinate system. Now, again, that NTV file, you can get it from the Canadian government website. And that is how you can handle the Canadian transformations. It does not ship with Civil 3D.